All right, guys, so today I'm going to be taking a look back at some of the Seattle Supersonics arena proposals, and then I am going to be talking about where do things stand today for the Sonics? Are they getting an NBA expansion team, relocation team? When is it going to happen? I think it's very likely based off of the investment that was made into Climate Pledge Arena, around a billion dollars privately funded, huge renovations. They get the NHL Seattle crack in, and they've got an arena that is new. It's ready for an NBA team. They've got a fan base there. Formerly that we know the Seattle Supersonics, I think they are going to be getting an expansion NBA team, possibly in the mid to late 2020s. But this video is going to be taking a look back at the evolution of their arena. The original plan was to build an arena specifically for an NBA expansion team. After the Sonics left in 2008, these plans were developed starting in late 2012. And we are going to go through kind of the five or six main arenas and then it got to the point where we do get interior stadium renderings what does the interior look like of a potential sonics arena it is very different than any other nba arena i can tell you that uh, but this is the first rendering we got this was in late 2012 looks like some type of egg-shaped design it had office buildings to the east and western side and featured a glass wave meant to invoke the feeling of the Puget Sound. Just taking a look at it, it looks very outdated for something in 2012, almost kind of like the old Oracle Arena with that egg-shaped design. I am not a fan of that, just looking at the exterior. And then this next one, which was the second option proposed in the same time period, so this is late 2012, really strange, almost doesn't even look like an NBA arena. I'm not even sure. It's almost like the arena would have to be built into the ground almost. That is a very low arena, kind of looks like college basketball type in terms of size. And then it does have a really weird roof design, almost like solar panels, you know, how they lay out the solar panels and angle them on the side. They weren't supposed to be solar panels. I just think that was what was like the architect's rendering and unique little aspect of it. But yeah, I'm really not a fan of that one. And then option three, this was the most popular one by far. And this is the option that eventually did become the idea of Sonic's Arena. A lot changed in the overall design of it, though. The top was meant to invoke a ship. And you can see the Grand Plaza entrance and an awning in the front with a large, large staircase that is a really, really cool design for an NBA arena. You could say it's doing too much. It looks like it's almost built up and maybe the entrance is like elevated way above the court. Like the court's in ground and it's built up. The entrance is like crazy stairs, almost like the entrance to a palace or a mansion or something. Really, really unique idea there. And then the overhang as well, like the glass overhang. That is definitely interesting. And then later, about a month later, there were a few more concept renderings of it being developed further. You can see kind of a weird, almost looks like oval shape arising over top, illuminating. That's where the arena would be. You can see the exterior of it as well in that photo. And then here are a few more photos. A lot of glass involved in this rendering around the exterior of the actual stadium. They were able to develop it more over the next year. These were the 2013 renderings, January of 2013. You can see how it's kind of developed now. And they do have that greenery in the roof which uh, I'm not the biggest fan of. If I'm going to be honest, I think it does, you, you know, I, I'm not sure what that bronze is, but it does look a little bit ugly to me. It just doesn't seem like the bronze really fits it. I would like to see kind of a metal chrome exterior, the, you know, those little waves things, whatever those are. It's a cool design. And then in the rendering, it says that this is the first time they introduced the green roof and the fin wall, which extended the length of the property down First Avenue. I would imagine that is the glass wall that is kind of extending beyond the stadium. You can see, I think that's pretty cool. That's an interesting design there. Also a training facility, uh, public plaza, exit views, green wall, 
and a green roof as well, all located in the interior of this. And then about a month later, in February of 2013, there were new updated renderings that came out. This was when it was announced that the Sacramento Kings had gotten an owner and they were very likely staying in Sacramento. There were just a few smaller exterior tweaks in this, along with introducing LED screens. And you can kind of see the image shows one potential design kind of the lighting that goes around it. Oh, this will be interesting. All right, so I'll tell you which lighting is my favorite for the design. The bottom right one, you would have to have more powerful lights. I think it's a dot design going around the entire exterior, but it's very hard to see. The bottom left design, I really like. It looks like a spaceship. The dots are a lot more, they're more spread out, you can tell, but they're a lot clearer. Uh, the top left, eh, it, it's all right. And then the top right, I hate it. I hate that one. That looks like an amusement park. So I would say the best light design would be bottom right or bottom left or top left, one of those two. And then there is another photo of it. You can see how it looks at night right next to T-Mobile Park. You know, it, it is illuminate. It's got the glass exterior that's lit up. And then these are the first interior renderings of it. So the really unique thing about the interior of this design is the Sonic Rings and the Pocket Suites. So the Sonic Rings were sections above all of the seating that were going to be like social areas, suite areas. Really, we've never seen something like that uh, before when it comes to an NBA arena you can see the Sonic rings right there. There's literally five rings or six rings stacked on top of each other at the top of the arena with all the different bars. Each ring was set to have its own theme from sports bar to super fan and also family friendly. So that is a really futuristic design for like 2013 or 2014 at the time, you know, Really, no arena I know has actually done something like this where they put just straight rings around the stadium for standing room areas, for bars, and there's a nice view of them kind of looking from the outside how they would look stacked on top of each other. And then that is a view of those are the rings covered for smaller events. You can see the Seattle green covering them. If you bring that up, all of the, you know, standing room area sections around the entire stadium get shown and you this gives us an overall look at kind of the way it was designed I will say that the lower bowl like right behind the baskets that's not a good design I would be splitting that up into two sections I wouldn't want that much uh, you know straight rows of seats I think that looks bad and then also right to the right of it is, is, is a little bit too much. So a little bit of a dated design, I'd say. The upper deck it is very, very close to the action because of those rings above it. It kind of brings it even closer. Very small suites right above the lower bowl. And then the upper deck starts right away. So really unique design. And then on August 6, 2013, they updated their design even more. Kind of refined it a little bit. Still looks very similar, but they had two different models. One that kind of had an extended area, uh, you know, in terms of the stadium. The other one that was more wide open. Uh, I, you know, I think the one on the left looks a little bit more clean. The one on the right looks like it has some type of weird cell attached to it. It looks a little lopsided. So I like the one on the left a little bit more. And then there you can see the difference right there. Along with other photos, the Seattle Arena. Along with other photos, you know, maintaining that exterior glass design of the Seattle Arena. So that is the full history of the Sonics Arena, the different renderings. It was going to cost right around $550 million. Of course, that plan didn't end up happening. They chose to redevelop and, and make the Climate Pledge Arena. Big, big renovation that went into that. Around a billion dollars in private money and a thousand days was the total build and it looks amazing. This is why the Sonics are going to have such a big advantage over other cities in a potential relocation. Not only do they have an arena, 
they've got a brand new state-of-the-art arena. And that's the whole idea behind both Las Vegas and Seattle being the two heavy favorites if the NBA does expand. It would not happen until at least after 2024, but probably, I'd say, after 2025. Due to Climate Pledge Arena, what happened with Seattle, the Kraken, they would be a big, big, big favorite to get an NBA franchise because it would be so easy. I mean, Climate Pledge Arena for for basketball, it would immediately turn into one of the better basketball arenas in the NBA. And you already do have a, a fan base there that, you know, the relocation happens. With the NBA, it's a little bit different than the MLB because there's less games. So I do think, you know, the reason they locate bad stadium, you know, maybe not great demand, they would get rejuvenated especially with a new arena with the Sonics back. I do think they're a major favorite because you have to factor in that brand new stadium that is ready to possibly host both NHL games and NBA games. We see that happen all the time with uh, arenas hosting both of those professional sports. So just that's a history on the Sonics arena, what it was going to be. It would have been really cool if they would have built that proposed one with the Sonic rings around it with just... All they were was just like five straight decks of standing room slash suite areas above the entire stadium. I've never seen that before. It really is a unique idea, and it would have been cool. Anytime an NBA arena does something that's really unique, it's always cool because they always just look the same. But either way, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.